Today, we're going to be playing through the demonstration scenario, The Cleansing Crusade. We'll be playing as Avilas, who is a high elf theocrat. He's the leader of a group of elves who live in the forests and whose land is being threatened by an encroaching blight. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do is to choose a research path to take. In Age of Wonders 3, each player has a main class which defines the style of gameplay which they were going to use. A theocrat is a sort of priest, so his main focus is inspiring his people to wage holy war against his enemies. And the skill we're going to choose to research will be this one, Purifying Burst. This is a battlefield-wide enchantment which will remove negative effects from our units. Now, as we can see, as we look around our domain, we have a sort of blight coming in from the north. This is a bad thing since it's going to reduce the amount of income we get in our cities. So we're going to want to do something about that by casting a spell. Now, Avulas, not only is he a theocrat, he's also taken the creation specialization, which gives him access to this spell, Cleanse the Lands. This will allow us to remove the blight and replace it with a temperate landscape, which his people prefer. However, that spell is not going to be ready until next turn. So, Next, we'll want to have a, have a look around our domain so to get a vague idea of where we stand. So we're going to take our leader from the capital city and move him onto this reflective ball to the southwest. Now, up to the north, I saw this. This dragon's graveyard, over time, is going to start producing units that will threaten our empire. So it's quite a high priority for us to try and go and get rid of that. We have a stack here, our hero, Eeldor the Fierce, who we can send up north, ready to deal with this next turn. Also, to the west, one of our gold mines appears to have been taken over by a group of human scoundrels. It's obviously not a good thing, so we'll want to get rid of those guys as well. Let's move in. that leader up here. Select auto combat. It's not going to be a very interesting fight anyway, and that problem at least has been dealt with. Move to the next turn. And our cleanse the, spell, cleanse the land spell is ready to be cast. So we just center on this little sign here, and whoops, okay, the blight has been gone, at least from the immediate area, and our citizens are happy. Okay, so for the first stop in our global crusade, we're going to go and cleanse this dragon's graveyard over here. Move in, click enter. On the left, we see our force of good against the evil armies of darkness on the right. Looks like we're going to be fighting a dragon. Then click on manual combat. Don't really want the AI to be taken over here. Here we see the dragon's graveyard with the big scary bone dragons coming over here. It'll probably do something really horrible to us. Yep, and there he goes. Oh. Breath. And now the other guys are coming in to follow up behind, the evil minions. Now as theocrats we obviously have a lot of powers to use against the undead and evil things. And the first thing we're going to try is cast the spell Bane of the Unnatural. This spell will give all of our devout units, which is most of the theocrat units, a damage bonus against the undead, i.e. this big scary dragon. Now, the first thing we want to do is try and flank him. So we move around behind him, try and backstab him. This means the dragon will lose one of its retaliations in order to turn around, and will also take extra damage. Our hero can also move in and flank him again. He once again, he loses one retaliation, and on the second strike he gets a retaliation. Also, maybe try and do a bit more damage with these Crusaders here. See if we can finish him off. Nope. Looks like he's made of sterner stuff, so that's not going to work. Now, we do have other things that we need to deal with, so we're going to use a little trick that the Theocrat has, which is the convertibility of the Evangelist. This allows the Evangelist to convert heathen enemies to the true faith. So we'll set these guys over here up on the right, and hopefully the enemy will move in towards them. There goes the dragon again with his gas breath attack. And here comes an assassin right into the jaws of our little priest we've got set up here. Other enemies moving in, fighting and standing. Now the first thing we want to do, our turn again, is holy war, another spell which once again will boost the damage output of all of our units. Very powerful theocrat spell. Now all of our units will do damage against all enemies. So the first thing we want to do now is try and convert these assassins. that, and now they're on our side, so we can send them over there and let them absorb some of the damage from these scoundrels. Now hopefully our crusaders can finish them off. 
I can see the holy war cards. The scoundrels really don't stand a chance against those super buffed units. And hopefully the dragon won't stand a chance either. Nope. There we go. And that just leaves one last little pile of skeletons for us to try and finish off. And down they go as well. And victory for the forces of justice. Okay, so now we've completed that treasure site, we get a reward, a magic sword, give it to our hero to make him more powerful, and now we're ready to bring the light of faith to the heathen masses across the world.